Good morning. I'm Mrs. Akins with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom, and I am super excited to be here with you today. How many of you remember when I was here last month? Do you remember what we talked about? That's right. We used Dr. Seuss and Dr. Seuss stories to learn about either bees, seeds, or water. But when I was here, I used one of my favorite words. Does anybody remember what that was? That's right. Agriculture. Can you guys all say agriculture? Agriculture. Very good. And when I was here with you last, I said when you heard that word agriculture, you should think of two different types of people. Do you guys remember the two people you were supposed to think of when you heard the word agriculture? That's right. You were supposed to think of ranchers or our cowboys and cowgirls. And remember, it was their job to take care of horses, sheep, and even beef cattle out on the ranches. Now, who remembers the second person you were supposed to think of when you heard the word agriculture? That's right our farmers. And we know that farmers also take care of animals. We learned about chickens, pigs, and dairy cows last time. But we also learned that our farmers do something else besides caring for animals. Does anybody remember what it was? Yes, and you even used the magic word. Our farmers grow crops. Can you say crops? crops. Very good. And that is all of the different fruits and vegetables and grains and even the fibers for our clothes that we've talked about the last several times I've been here. And so with that, I'm very excited that for the rest of today, we get to learn more about plants. How many of you guys have a garden at your house? Does anybody have a garden? A couple of you have a garden. I actually saw when I was coming in that you guys have a garden here at school. Is that something that your class gets to participate with? Yeah. So I love plants. And of course, we find many of the plants in our gardens at home or here at our school. And of course, we find a lot of plants on the farms here in Arizona as well. But to help us learn a little bit about plants today, we are going to begin with a story. And our story is How to Grow a Monster. How to Grow a Monster by Kiki Thorpe, illustrated by Barbara Bongini. It was spring. The sun was shining. A warm breeze blew. Mom was wearing a funny hat. I knew it was that time of year again. Time to plant the garden. Every year, my sister Kara and I helped mom plant our garden. My favorite part was digging in the dirt. Mom got out trowels, gardening forks, and seeds. What should we plant first? She asked. I looked through the seed packets. There were carrots, lettuce, radishes, peas, and Oh no, I groaned. Not zucchini again. Last summer, we grew tons of zucchini. We didn't know what to do with it all. Mom put it in everything. Zucchini pancakes, zucchini noodles, zucchini loaf, zucchini for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just thinking about it made me feel green. Don't worry, Gabe. It'll just be a few plants, Mom said. That's what she told us last year, too, Kara mumbled. While Mom was looking for her gardening gloves, Kara pulled me aside. This year, we are going to take care of those zucchini before they take over, she said. I have a plan. A plan? I like the sound of that. Kara whispered in my ear. Then we got to work. Zucchini like lots of sun. 
Kara and I tried to plant the seeds in the shady part of the garden. We figured with less sun, the zucchini plants wouldn't grow as well. But Mom noticed. Zucchini, go over here. She pointed to a sunny spot. Drat. Don't worry, Kara whispered. I have a plan B. Some plants need a lot of sun to thrive. Other plants do better in shade. Read your seed packets to see where your plants will do best. Kara and I were extra helpful in the garden. Every day we weeded and watered, but really we were spies. We were keeping an eye on the zucchini. When the plant sprouted, it was time for action. Kara and I pulled up some of the seedlings. Not all of them, mind you. We left a few for mom. Four plants seems like plenty, Kara said. I had to agree. Pulling up seedlings to make room for larger plants is called thinning, and it can help your garden. It gives the remaining plants more room to grow. A single zucchini plant can produce more than six pounds of zucchini in one season. The plants grew bigger. When flowers appeared, Kara told me the next part of her plan. Zucchini plants have two different kinds of flowers, she explained. I read about it in mom's gardening book. The first kind of flowers pollinate the second kind. That's why we have to pick these flowers. No flowers, no pollination. No pollination, no zucchini. Mom won't be mad if we pick them, I asked. Not if we make dinner with them, Kara said. That's the cool part. You can eat zucchini blossoms. Kara and I harvested the flowers. Pollination is when pollen is shifted from the male part of the plant to the female part. Usually the pollen is moved by wind, birds, or insects such as bees. Harvest means to pick or gather a crop. Kara found a recipe online. We made zucchini blossom quesadillas for dinner. Mom was really impressed. What a treat, she said. I had no idea you two were such gourmet chefs. Have seconds, Kara said. I thought eating flowers would be weird but they actually tasted pretty good. Kara and I thought our zucchini troubles were over, but a week later, I spotted some small green zucchini on the plants. Uh-oh, I said, we must have missed some flowers. Quick, pick them before they get any bigger, Kara said. Just then, Mom showed up. What's going on, she asked. Kara held out the little zucchini. Look, it's uh, the first crop. Mom looked surprised. I've never known you two to be so excited to eat zucchini, she said. Better a few small zucchini now than millions of zucchini later, Kara whispered. Kara's not exactly right here. Picking early might actually encourage a zucchini plant to grow more. We had the little zucchini for dinner that night. Mom cooked them in butter. Mmm, not bad. Maybe I was starting to like zucchini after all. For the best flavor, pick zucchini when they are small. I thought that would be the end of it. But a few weeks later, I noticed something hiding under the leaves of a zucchini plant. It was big. It was green. It was, yikes, it's a monster, I yelled. Kara and mom came running. There beneath the leaves was the biggest zucchini we had ever seen. Kara grabbed the garden shears. She was about to cut the giant zucchini from the vine. Stop, I shouted. What's wrong? Kara asked. 
Nothing's wrong, I said. It's awesome. That monster zucchini was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in our garden. I couldn't let Kara cut it. I'm going to call it the Green Zook Monster, I said. Greeny for short. You named the zucchini? Kara rolled her eyes. Oh, brother. How big could a zucchini get? I had to find out. Mom helped me do some gardening research. Kara and I had created a monster without even knowing it. We thinned the seedlings. We harvested the small early zucchini. It turns out that's how we helped grow a giant zucchini. For the rest of the summer, I took care of my monster. I watered the zucchini plant every week. When the weather was hot, I watered more often. Not all plants need the same amount of water. Celery needs a lot of water or the stalks will taste bitter. A desert plant such as the cactus needs much less water. When I saw bugs on the leaves, I picked them off. I planted marigolds nearby to help keep other pests away from the garden. Marigolds are natural pest control. They put out a chemical that fights off some tiny worms that feed on plant roots. And every day I measured. One day, Greeny grew two whole inches. By late August, Greeny was over two feet long. It weighed almost 15 pounds. I was super proud of my monster. Kara wasn't as excited. We're going to be eating zucchini lasagna for months, she grumbled. Actually, Mom said, I have a better idea. We took Greeny to the county fair instead. My zucchini won first prize. Way to go, little bro, Kara said. I can't wait for next summer. I have big plans. I'm going to grow a whole garden of monsters. Wasn't that a great book? I love that story. Now, as we are reading the book, you heard about how Gabe and Kara took care of that zucchini plant and all of the different things that they did in order to keep it alive and to grow a monster zucchini. So what were some of the things that they did in the book to help keep that plant alive? What kind of things did the, the plant need? It needed to be watered, right? So they had to keep track of how much water they gave the plants. What else? Yep, so I heard someone say it. They had to make sure there wasn't, wasn't any pests or bugs around the plants. That's another thing that they have to make sure. Anything else? They had to know when to pick the plants, how to when to pick the zucchini, when was the right time. Excellent. You guys were paying attention to the story. So every single day, farmers have to pay attention to all of those things. It doesn't matter what type of crop that they're growing, what type of, of vegetable or grain or fiber that they're growing. There's lots of different things that they have to do to make sure that those plants live and they can pick them at the perfect time. And so they have to make sure they're watered correctly. They have to make sure that they don't have bugs or pests. And if they do, they have to make sure that they take care of that so that the plant can still grow. And they have to make sure that they pick the, whether it's cotton or grain or zucchinis, they have to make sure they pick it at the perfect time. And in order to do that, one of the things they have to know about the plant is all the different parts and how they grow. So today, we're going to look at all the different parts of the plant. Are you guys ready to look at the parts of the plant and learn about them? Good. I'm, I'm glad you're excited. I'm excited about it as well. So today, I brought with me a giant zucchini plant. And I'm going to need your help to decide where the parts go. Okay. So over.
over here you can see that I have my giant zucchini plant, but there's a lot of parts missing to this plant, right? Okay, so I'm gonna need your help. The parts that we have on here, this is the stem, okay? And that is really important for the, for the plant to grow. It gives it its water. It makes sure water moves all over the plants to different parts. But first off, we're, there's a part missing that brings the water up from the ground. What part do you think is the part that's missing? It would be underground that brings the water up to the plant. I heard someone say it. The roots, yes. So I have some roots here, good job. Okay, so I'm gonna put the roots. Do the roots go up here? No, that'd be silly. They go down here underground, right? And the roots are super important. And sometimes we forget how important roots are because they're hidden under the ground. But they hold the plant, they anchor it, kind of like an anchor on a boat so that our trees don't blow over when we have big storms, right? And they also bring up water and nutrients from the ground. And that, so that way the stem can send it to different places. And they also do something very important. They hold the soil in the ground so it doesn't blow away or wash away. Okay, that's called erosion. And we don't want that to happen. We need our soil to grow our crops. So plants are very important because they have the roots that hold that soil there. Okay, so we have our roots and the water nutrients comes up and then it goes through the stem. And then it needs to go to a part of the plant that the plant uses to make its own food. Does anyone know the part of the plant that makes its own food? Oh, I heard a lot of different parts. I'm gonna give you another hint. This plant uses photosynthesis. This part of the plant uses photosynthesis. That's a really big word, but I think some of you have heard it before. Photosynthesis, it absorbs sunlight to make food for the, I heard it leaves the leaves of the plant so i have a lot of leaves on our plant plants need lots of leaves because they need to absorb sunlight so that they can make food through photosynthesis right they take in that gas that we breathe out carbon dioxide they take it in and they help turn it into something that we need to breathe does anyone know what it is that we need to breathe air you're right you're right, air, but there's something special in air that we really need. Oxygen, I heard someone say oxygen, yes. So those leaves are important. So if we see a plant and we pull off all the leaves, is that gonna be good for the plant? No, so when you're on the playground and you see those leaves, don't pull them off the plant because that plant needs them to grow and to make food for the plants. All right, so we have our roots, brings up water, it goes through the stem, it goes to the leaves, the leaves make food. And what's the next thing that the plant needs? What are we missing? This is something that attracts things like bees and other pollinators to the plant. Oh, what do bees like? Flowers. And they look in those flowers for, what do they look for? Not, not honey, but they use the nectar that's inside flowers to make honey when they get home, okay? So there's nectar in flowers. So we have some flowers here on our zucchini plant. Look at all the flowers. Okay, so different flowers here, and that's gonna attract things like bees and other pollinators to go in there. And when they go from flower to flower, they get some pollen on them. And then we go to the another, another flower, some of it falls off. And that makes something important. What's the next part of the plant? What do you guys think? What was the part of the plant in the story that they had to pick? The zucchini, right? We need zucchini, there's no zucchini up there. So in order for those zucchinis to grow, they grow from the flowers because they're pollinated. So I have lots of different stages of flowers some little and some or er, some fruit and some big ones okay so i'm going to put them on here so you guys can see all right look at these big zucchinis these are not as big as the story though these aren't monster zucchinis okay so there's baby little baby flowers here 
on the zucchini so you can see when they're little the the flowers kind of fall off as they get bigger and there's a big big zucchini and then there's a giant one this one has seeds in it now zucchinis have seeds right just like this one actually i'll bring it so you guys can see the seeds do you guys see the seeds in there so zucchinis that have seeds what does that make it what part of the plant a zucchini is a if it has seeds in it it's a fruit good who said that good job fruit so when they have seeds in it it is a fruit so we have our roots that bring up nutrients and water that hold the plant the stem that makes the water move all around to the different parts we have leaves that make the energy for the plant we have the flowers that attract pollinators to come to the flowers and then when they're pollinated they turn into fruit like zucchini that was a super cool activity and now i know you guys all know the five parts of our plant and can anybody tell me what the part of the zucchini plant was that we ate or that we eat that's right it was the fruit of the plant but one of the things that i think is the coolest is that depending if it's a fruit or a vegetable you guys are actually eating the different parts of the plant it might not always be the fruit sometimes it might be the stem the roots the leaf or the flower so what we're going to do for this next activity is i'm going to show you some different pictures of hopefully fruits and vegetables that you are very familiar with and when i hold up that picture i want you to tell me what part of the plant you're eating when you are eating that fruit or vegetable are you guys ready what part of the plant are you eating when you eat a carrot that's right the roots how about asparagus the stem it even kind of looks like it doesn't it Ooh, this one's tricky cauliflower cauliflower that's right it's the flower of the plant how about beets do you guys know what beets are that's right they're the root of the plant this is the part that grows underground and our stem and our leaves here how about this one who likes corn on the cob what are the kernels that's the seeds of the plant very good how about apples close that's the fruit of the plant right and what's inside our fruit seeds very good lettuce of course that's the leaf of the plant it looks just like it and remember arizona is the winter lettuce capital of the world how about this one this one's just like the other one spinach you guys like spinach of course that's the leaf of the plant how about the little green trees broccoli what do you think it's the flower of the plant. That one's a tricky one. How about a tomato? Remember, it has, in, it has seeds inside. That's right, makes it the fruit. How about peaches? The fruit, right, it has a pit inside. How about, well, this one's really easy, sunflower seeds. Of course, they're the seed of the plant, sunflower seeds. How about peppers? These are bell peppers. It's the fruit of the plant. How about peas? The seeds of the plant. And one of my favorites, strawberries. That's right. It's also the fruit of the plant. Now, this is the one we talked about in October. What is it? A pumpkin, of course. And it is the fruit of the plant because it has what inside? Seeds that's right Ooh, how about celery that's the stem of the plant look you can see it right there the leaves are on top and here's the stem how about peanuts that one's tricky isn't it 
Yeah, it's the seed of the plant. And a cucumber. Remember, this has seeds in it. So although we might think of it as one thing, it's really the other. That's right, it's the fruit. And last but not least, leaves. That's right, cabbage. When you are eating cabbage, you are eating the leaves of the plant. You guys all did a fantastic job with that. So let's review really quickly. What are the five parts of the plant? Let's start at the bottom and go up. The roots, the stem, the leaves, the flowers, and the fruit. Very good. I hope you guys had an awesome time today. I know I enjoyed my time here with you today. And remember, we did leave the book with your teacher in case you want to remember what we learned about today. Thanks and have a good rest of the day.